Want to eat fresher? This week we cover interesting ways to connect you to your food. From squashing tomatoes to not even needing soil to grow your own veggies. That's next. Welcome to another episode of Andable TV, where every week we uncover ideas that offer fresh ways to enjoy the good things. Passata Day is an Italian tradition that truly revels in the overripe and the seasonality of food. It's really just an end of season shindig where you get your friends and family together to crush and bottle the ripest tomatoes in the garden to be able to enjoy a little bottle of summer during the cold depths of winter. All you need is some end of season tomatoes, a few friends, some sterilised bottles and bada bing, you're in the Passata business. The awesomely messy process includes washing, boiling, smashing and bottling the tomatoes. And after the hard work, the sauce is enjoyed as a big Italian meal. The final result delivers bottles of homemade jarred tomato sauce to keep enjoying well after the last tomato is picked from the vine. Have you preserved any food? We'd love to hear your recipes. We all know the benefits of having our own garden, but it's hard to get a garden growing. So what can you do? The folks at the Little Veggie Patch can help. They come to your place with a complete raised bed made of apple crates. They even tell you what to plant and when. Their patches can fit in the tightest spaces like narrow laneways or even inside restaurants like the Little Creatures Brewery. And if you're in Melbourne, you can rent a space from them on Federation Square's rooftop, which has been transformed into a vibrant veggie garden. The pop-up patch is made up of over 140 DIY veggie plots, most of which are leased to the public. Every restaurant in Federation Square has its own plot too, so you can taste what's grown right in the middle of Melbourne City. Another very cool way to grow your own veg with no outdoor space is to take it inside with an aquaponics garden. Aquaponics is a system that mimics the natural relationship between plants and fish. The fish waste isn't waste at all. It's used as the fertiliser for the plants. The plants then clean the water and pump it back down to the fish. Very cool. The best part is all this is happening without soil or any chemical fertilisers. It's such a great way to have fresh produce growing right in your kitchen. For more on all these ways to grow your own veggies, see the links in the description. And if you have an interesting way to grow your veggies or even sprout your own mushrooms, we'd love to hear it or even see it. Post a photo on Instagram or video reply below. If you do have a bit of space but have more of a sweet tooth, maybe you could harvest your own honey. Unlike conventional honey, which is pasteurised and ultra-filtered, your honey is rich with pollen from your neighbourhood. So it has its own unique local taste. Did you know that it takes over 4 million flowers to make just one kilogram of honey? Bees are super important to pollination and their numbers have been devastated by human activity, which means fewer types of fruit and veg. Don't know the first thing about beekeeping? Me neither. But there are urban beekeepers around the country that do. They can set up and manage a hive on your rooftop, backyard or community garden. Businesses are getting into the action too. The Urban Beehive in Sydney has hives on the roofs of the Swiss Hotel and restaurants like Berta. Other urban beekeepers are helping businesses like Dead Man Espresso in Melbourne and Kettle and Tin in Brisbane, where you can indulge in honey harvested straight from their rooftops. Well, that's it for this week. Make sure you're across the latest on all the ideas that are shaping our world by clicking subscribe. If you have an idea for a featured story, let us know on Facebook or Twitter or right here on the channel. Thanks for joining and I'll see you next week. Yeah, for Saturday. Hey, bada bing.